Hey, it's time to dish with D. That's me. Thank you for coming on this video and making yourself a priority. I am Denise. So it is Monday, and Monday is da -da 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 -da, my weekly weigh-in and Weight Watchers weekly meeting topic for the week. Now let's recap. If, in case you didn't know, I started attending my WW workshop again on this past Friday. I will be attending on Fridays. I believe the meeting is at 10. 9.30 starts weighing and it starts at 10. That's a really good time for me. I might go to the earlier one, but with the dog and getting him settled in, it just, it, the 10 works for me. So yeah, I am back fully on WW, only tracking on Weight Watchers. I am currently doing the diabetic plan and I've been asked why. I feel like it gives me a little bit more accountability and a few more points. I did learn something tracking macros and calories. I did learn that I really need to eat more of the right foods. Not of the other foods, but of the right foods. So yes, so it just helps me with more points per day and it helps me be more accountable for things. I am not diabetic, I am not pre-diabetic. I'm not even in the vicinity of being diabetic according to my last blood work. But you know what, that could change you know anybody at any given time. Sometimes it's a pancreatic thing where it's, we did, it didn't run in my family. My parents were not diabetics, so it didn't run there. But you know, sometimes your pancreas gets old, doesn't secrete as much insulin, and sometimes you just need a little extra help. So I get weighed in on Fridays, but I, what I will, I think I will do going forward is record that weigh in and then add that to this portion of the video and still upload on Mondays because I like this schedule, but I like my first reaction you know, when you kind of get, get in on the scale and stuff like that. So I knew I was going to be up. First of all, I haven't gotten weight in clothes in a year and a half. So yeah. And I know the Weight Watcher scale always weighs me more than my home scale. So I knew those two factors going in there, I, it was going to be up. It was up 6.2 pounds to be exact. Um, was any of that a little bit of me eating? I don't think so. To be honest, I mean, the holiday was the week prior. So I don't think it was that. I will say, I kind of forgot I was getting weighed in and I didn't do my usual pre-weigh-in routine. Well, I have like a routine that we do. Um, me, it's the green tea flush. I did not flush on Thursday. I kind of forgot. And then I realized and it was like at night, I'm like, I'm not gonna flush at seven o'clock. It's, I'm not gonna be up all night. It's, you know, but I normally drink 32 ounces of green tea the day before. That's the only other thing I do. And I didn't do that. Not that that's gonna make any big difference, but you just know now. But yeah, that I didn't do my usual routine. So again, I'm fine with it. You know, it's a restart for me. Is it adding to the weight I have to lose? It sure is. You know what? You can't look at it that way. You just look at it that this is where you're starting and it's a whole new you. So that's how I'm looking at it. I'm excited to be back. I'm more excited than I actually thought I was going to be. That's what's interesting. When I finally, when I saw that the meeting had moved, I'm like, ooh, I can get there. And I got excited. And then when I really committed to going, I got really excited. And I think that says volumes to me. Like if you're excited about being there and being on that plan, you know, maybe that's the plan for you. So we will have a whole video on that. I'm gonna do a little mini collab with my girlfriend, Danielle Nicole, cause she went back to Weight Watchers as well. And honestly, there's nothing wrong with switching back and forth. Uh, it just, it changes things up. It just gives you a new perspective and there's nothing wrong with it honestly and i will say welcome back to people that had come back a lot of pe few people had left because i wasn't really doing weight watchers focused content even though i technically was in a sort of way but i am committed to weight watchers and that has brought a lot of you back so welcome back i am so happy that you're back and i get it i do because i get when you watch a channel and they're not giving you what you want i get it you change the channel i do it so i get that i totally understand that you know, you subscribe, you watch for a reason. And when that reason changes, it's like, yeah, yeah, no. So I totally understand that, but welcome back. And if you are new here and just joining us, welcome to Dish with D. So let's get to the weekly meeting topic at hand, shall we? Beth Jane wrote this one, my girl, Beth Jane. All right, it is said, three questions to ask yourself to help you stay on track. We've done this one a lot, but it's always a good one. Why can't I stick with anything? All that work was for nothing. I blew it. It's normal to tell yourself stories like these at various moments on a weight health journey and for them to lead you to not so happy endings for your goals. Next time, ask yourself these three cues 
to change the narrative. And my glasses keep them because it is hot out. It is humid already and it's only nine o'clock. Try this. What are my thoughts right now? Pay attention to the story you're telling yourself. Ugh, I'm going to miss my step goal again. I just can't stick with anything. Why bother? Sometimes we just, there's days you don't stick to things. Look at me. You know what? You have to be, realize that you're human and things like, this is not your whole life. That's the biggest thing you want to say. This is this is just a small part of my life. You can't, you know, we want to focus, yes, but we have so many other things going on. So, yes, sometimes things just don't ever happen the way we want them to. How do those things make you feel and what's the impact? They are causing you to lose confidence, feeling down or uninspired. How might that play out? Focusing on this setback makes you frustrated and doubtful of myself. It could lead me to give up. We work hard and I feel like setbacks are normal. I feel like we have to normalize setbacks. Not that we're making excuses. There's a difference between normalizing a setback and using it as an excuse for like, oh, I didn't work out. So, you know, no, no, it's, it's sometimes stuff happens, stuff comes up, you know, and you can't beat yourself up for things that happen in your life. How can I shift the story? Get curious, think about how you would respond in a way that inspires you. I'll remind myself one day off doesn't mean the game is over. Then I'll make a plan to walk tomorrow, ask a friend to join me and put my sneakers at the door. Let's dive a little deeper as we let the dog in. Ever find yourself way off track, like skipping your usual activity a few days in a row or hardly paying attention to your points budget and not sure how you got there or what happened? Chances are it started with an unchecked thought. What we think drives what we do is easy for unhelpful thoughts to snowball into actions or inaction or into actions or inactions. By paying attention to those unhelpful thoughts start to creep in and recognize their potential impact you can make a conscious effort to break the chain reaction see that's it right there it's not the thought it's how we respond to the thought because we're going to have on we want to have these thoughts they're going to be there it's we have to change our reaction we cannot change that we're not going to get unhelpful thoughts i'm never going to have an unhelpful thought i'm never going to say this i'm never going to say that now you're going to say it we're going to say it. It's how you react. We want to change the narrative of how you react to that. The goal, accept the situation and your thoughts because they're valid. But don't let them take over and wreak havoc on your confidence, momentum, or journey. Yes, it's normal. But we don't need to wallow in that. We don't need to use that as an excuse. We need to sit there and accept it. Yeah, it happened. It is. It is what it is. Some days I, that just happens and that's normal. We just dust ourselves off and we move on because that's life. I don't know anybody that doesn't have these setbacks. I don't. And if you don't have setbacks, let me know why. I'm curious. Because we all do. And we all have these thoughts. It's we don't wallow in them. We don't use them as a, an excuse to go further off plan. I know it is. I, I've said this before. I, I hear people. I talk to people and I, well, you know, and it's like, you just want to eat. So let's find an excuse for it. Let's, you know, no, you know, if you want to eat, eat, don't look for an excuse to do it. I want to eat it. And I ate it. Simple as that. Move on. You're going to have like, they call, I don't want to call them a binge, but it's just a, a, a meal or a food you didn't have points for. You didn't, you know, plan on eating it. And, you know, it, it, but sometimes you just have those moments where you just want it. As long as you don't stay in that moment, I feel like if you acknowledge that moment, you talk to yourself through that moment, and you maybe have some of that food. And then kind of walk away from that moment. Don't sit there and stare at that food. I'm not going to have any more as you stare at it. Because let me tell you something. You can sit there and say that all the time. If it's staring at you, all of a sudden it's in your mouth. How did it get there? I have no idea. It happens. Many of our thoughts are automatic and unnoticed, so it might feel challenging to first pay attention and respond in new ways. Be patient and kind to yourself. That's something new, isn't it? Keep practicing that awareness, and it will serve you at every stage of your journey. You, yeah, it's definitely the reaction. 
It's not the thought because you can't control how you think, but you can control how you react. Because reacting is something, you know, thoughts just pop in your head. Reactions don't pop in your head. You react because you know what to do or you do what you want to do. So we want to change that. Things are going to happen. How am I going to react differently? I, I like that sentence. Break the chain reaction. You have to change the narrative. If you want change, you have to change the narrative. You have to change the reaction. The narrative will eventually hopefully change, <laughs> but we want to change the reaction. And that's, that's something we work on every day. We do. And how can you shift your story? How could you, I mean, do you have the same unhelpful thoughts every week? We have to shift the story. How could we, you know, how do I react differently to that situation? And if you, you need help, put it in the group. See what people would recommend that you do. And maybe that might help. Put it, you know, put your thoughts out there to the world. Sometimes saying it and reading it back makes all the difference. Just being in your head, sometimes you need to get out of your head and onto paper. Or as we say, on digital. Put it in the group. Put your thoughts, put your, your feelings out there. And, you know, it, it's a risk. You might, you probably will get not, you probably will get the reaction you don't want, but that's the one you're looking for. That makes us out of our comfort zone. But if somebody, and you have multiple people tell you the same thing, it's like, maybe they're right. You know, stop making excuses, make better, make, make try to make better judgment calls afterwards. It's hard. Yeah. It takes, takes time. It's not going to happen overnight, but the more you practice it, the better it gets. That is it for this week's WW Weekly Meeting Topic. I thank you so much. Let me know in the comment section below how your week went. Let me know what you thought of this week's topic. Do you ask yourself these three questions? Do you want to change the response? Yeah, that's the goal. You cannot change the narrative right now. But you can change the way you respond. And sometimes you have to stop and think about it. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know with a big old thumbs up. And if you are new here, welcome. If you're not, hit that subscribe button. Join us here at Dish with D, where we are doing Weight Watchers content full time these days. Yes, 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 yes. I'm super excited. I'm back on track, back on WW, back to meetings. And I know a lot of you can't get to meetings and I do feel for you, I do. I don't think it's fair, I don't. But this, like I said, this one isn't a, not a new meeting. It is one that was further that they moved. So it used to be 40 minutes. Now it's only 20 minutes. So I can do 20 minutes and I'm super excited about going. So that is it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Have a great rest of your day and we will dish another day. Goodbye for now, my guys, my lovelies.